Our seminar kata for tonight is Wan Khan. Um, Wan Khan is one of the most mysterious kata as far as where it came from. Nobody seems to have be sure at all. Uh, the words mean king's crown is not uh, practiced that often. Um, it's a, a tribute to the kata that Sensei Mori did, has done in every summer camp that, that I remember going back way back when. So he thought the kata was important. And he also said, he, he lent credence to the king's crown idea because he said when you perform this kata, it should be very regal, like, like a king or a queen uh, kind of feeling. This kind of feeling. Uh, the other thing, Wang Khan is about the shortest kata in the, in the decay uh, stable. And it's led to, it's so short, and it almost seems like half a kata. You go up and back once, like hand short on it, and then it's done. So there's, a, there's a, another conspiracy theory that maybe the kata is actually an unfinished kata. That, uh, Perhaps this is one of the ones that Gigo Funakoshi was working on, and then he he died young and never finished it. So they practice the part of the kata that was finished. I don't know if this is true. Who knows? Wangan has a lot of cat stance, neko ashidachi in it. Now some people might be like wondering what we we hardly do cat stance. We we never do it in kumite. Uh, sometimes we might use it as an exercise, and it's only actually occasionally pops up in kata. And uh, so, what's it for? And I, I went over this in one of my other seminars that these short stances, like Sanchen stance, Neko Ashi Dachi, these are, these are short range, more self defense kind of stances that you use if the opponent's on top of you or you have very little room to move, okay? So we're used to practicing big rooms, our kumite, we, we cover a lot of distance, our long stances are especially good for that kind of thing, kumite, okay? Where you, you see your opponent and you have room to make your big stances. So because, of, it's, because we do so many big stances, it's very important for you to master the smaller stances. One of the purposes of stances is, is a couple purposes. One, it's very, it's very mobile. It's very easy from here to spring, to, to move about spring. So it's a one-footed stance. You don't need much space to make this stance. Okay, but the other one is a, your clothes, your groin area. Protect your groin area from this stance, which you see at the end of hangats. Okay, protecting against opponents, keep them in. Low kick. The, the kind of situation where you might use cat stance or sunshine stance or something like that is if somebody grabs you. If somebody grabbing onto you, you don't need to make such a stable stance. They're actually making you stable for a moment. So you can you can go to a stance like this and use this front leg to kick or knee. And you're, you're stable because you have his two feet and his hands holding you in still. Okay, so this stance doesn't need to be Sochin stance or something. But then picture for these smaller stances that somebody grabs you, attacks you, and you're like in a restaurant or something. And the tables and chairs are all really close together. You cannot step far if you don't have room to step. If you step, into front stance with all kinds of obstacles around you, you are uh, probably just going to trip. Okay, so that's, that's these stances need to be mastered for situations where things are tight. Okay, Neko Ashi Dachi, cut stance. Feet 45 degrees, heels together. Bend your, your front knee as far as you can. Squeeze your thighs together so that your knees, back knee is almost behind your front knee, 
And make sure on the ball of the foot, make sure that your should be vertical, your, your lower leg, your foreleg. Uh, if, you, if you're a little bit out, that's okay. A little bit back is no good. The depth of your stance, you should be, should be the same as front stance. Make front stance, then come to here. Don't change the bend in your front knee. Then come back. Hip level, don't stand there. Then come back. A lot, of, a lot of hurt in the front knee. So, like we always do, We'll do the kata together once to count, and then I'll get into the analysis. Okay. Ready? One count. Yo. E. Cross up to you. 
Since the book has no specific instructions on when to look, up to you when you want to look at your feeling. Okay? Next movement. Asana uh, scissors, scissors block. Same as Ni Jushiko. And uh, punch is coming to face. Actual application, you would pull this to the side so you don't be punched in the mouth. But basically, you've got his fist stuck between your forearms. And this next part of the kata is really cool that way because the opponent's trying to get his fist out from between your forearms. So it's very important that you step, you step very smoothly. One, two, three. Such that with the feeling that the reason he can't escape is because you're matching his pull power perfectly with your movement toward him. Okay, so you have to have that feeling like somebody's pulling and you're moving toward them. We have the same idea in uh, hungus. Somebody grabs my hand, they're starting to pull me in that direction. We start to move toward them. As they pull, we let our body go with them because they're moving, they're going to be a little bit off balance. That lets us uh, make the next technique. So we block, we grab his fist, we follow him. Tate shuta oke. Okay? This goes straight in. Same as, uh, as some of the other kata, whenever you have this kind of action, the idea is that he's trying to punch and you're slicing inside the arm and ending with your palm against his armpit. So you've got him out at, at uh, arm's length and you deflected the punch off to the side as you put the arm out. Okay, so we're here. One, smoothly, extend, double punch. Then, opponent's coming from the side, just like ni jushiho. This is sukidashi, uh, means a push or thrust to the knee, catch the, catch the, the ankle of a kick, pull it off to your side, cross, so that you're catching the ankle, and this hand is going against the, the knee, and causing the opponent to spill over from here. Very important that you have, that your down stance to be able to apply pressure in this stance. Okay? But otherwise, same as a Nijushiro application. Then, again. Okay. Then, more difficult, you have to turn all the way around and do the same one. Okay. Then, again, push the person back and double punch. Okay? okay. We are here. Um, um. Next, from here, Kensuyuchi, Mwashuchi, roundhouse, bottom fist strike, come from under the armpit. Not everybody does this, but with good basics. So we are coming to here. One, two, three. And it makes sense that you're in this position. I'm turning this way into a uh, bottom fist strike. This arm is in the way of a, of, of a flat plane. So it makes sense that you would be underneath for this one. It's not always true in all cut. Okay. Uh, this can be a block strike, uh, or just a strike, or just a block, uh, as, as in the other kata. Okay, next, your feeling is you're at the, be doing basics for a sundown gradient or something, three times. Kick, kick, and punch. Kick, and punch. Okay, kick, and punch. Front kick, punch. 
we don't have the, exactly this basic uh, combination in any of the ka other kata that I remember, certainly not three of them. Um, so as in any kind of time the basics in kata, the important thing is if you're making front kick and lunge punch, when you practice this yourself and you're trying to make it better, you have to think about what you're trying to do is go kick and, kick and punch the same way, same timing, let this say, the same timing that you would go like this. So to do that, and of course you won't be quite that fast, because you it takes a little bit more time. But to do that, you gotta make sure you're not kicking here. You have to kick with your hip well forward with your supporting leg, such that the punch, not one, two, so that the punch comes very quick after the kick. Uh, and at the same time, the, the front, the kicking leg hits the ground, but very quickly after the front kicks me. The farther your weight, the center of gravity is forward. When you kick, the closer the kick and the punch will be. So that's what you have to work on for that. Okay, so the third one over here. Next, standing ready, this is Kamai. Furoda, uh, Sochi Dachi, Furo Dachi. Regular, regular whip. Then, very low one, Yamasuki, same mountain punch, same one as Basai Dai, except, and Kiai, except that the target is, this one is Chura, and this one is Gira. So, Basai, the, the top one is Jora. So to do this, to deflect a stomach punch to the side, which you can do, stomach punch is coming, you deflect it and follow through and punch. To do this, you have to get down in really deep stance. So, so when you come down, really go down this way. Okay? Because it just get down as far as you can. And can. Then finish time.